Good morning, my friends. It's Data Corsello, the Vicar of the Cathedral. Today is the 24th of January, and I am celebrating the feast day of the first woman ordained in the Anglican Communion, Florence Lee Tim Oy. She died in 1992, and I didn't know about her, um, and I hate to admit that, so that's why I want to share her feast day with you. But first, let's begin with a prayer. Almighty God, who pours out your spirit upon your sons and daughters, grant that we, following the example of your servant, Florence Lee Tim Oy, chosen priest in your church, may with faithfulness, patience, and tenacity proclaim your holy gospel to all the nations through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Holy One, you know our needs before we ask. Grant that we may persevere in our prayers for the needs of all creation and renew our trust in your loving care for us through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The psalm appointed for her feast day, I think is Psalm 116 and it's, it's appropriate. And this is also one of those psalms that I love, but I don't often think about, or I don't go back and reread. So I also wanted to point that out because I think you should get out your prayer books or your Bible and look up Psalm 116. I love the Lord because he has heard the voice of my supplication, because he has inclined his ear to me whenever I called upon him. The cords of death entangled me the grip of the grave took hold of me. I came to grief and sorrow. Then I called upon the name of the Lord. O oh Lord, I pray you, save my life. Gracious is the Lord and righteous. Our God is full of compassion. The Lord watches over the innocent. I was brought very low, and he helped me. Turn again to your rest, O oh my soul, for the Lord has treated you well. For you have rescued my life from death, my eyes from tears, and my feet from stumbling. I will walk in the presence of the Lord in the land of the living. I believed even when I said, I have been brought very low. In my distress, I said, no one can be trusted. How shall I repay the Lord for all the good things he has done for me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his peoples." Now, I think once I tell you a little bit about her story, you'll understand, because um, that, that psalm is, you know, the psalmist is expressing sort of pain and desolation, um, and I know she felt that during her life. So Florence Lee Tim Oy was the first woman, as I said, ordained in the Anglican Communion. She was named by her father, it means much beloved daughter. She was born in Hong Kong in 1907. And when she was baptized as a student, she chose the name of Florence in honor of Florence Nightingale. She studied at seminary and, in gra and she graduated in 1938 and she served as a lay worker first in Kowloon and then in nearby Macau. I think that's how you say that. In May of 1941, Florence was ordained deaconess, and then history intervened. Some months later, Hong Kong fell to Japanese invaders and priests could not travel to Macau to celebrate the Eucharist. Despite this setback, Florence continued her ministry. Her work came to the attention of Bishop Ronald Hall of Hong Kong, who decided, and I quote, God's work would reap better results if she had the proper title of priest. So on January 25th, 1944, the feast of the conversion of St. Paul, Bishop Paul ordained her as a priest. Now keep in mind the first ordinations happened in the Episcopal ordinations happened here in 1977. So this was just unheard of and very controversial. So when World War II came to an end, Florence's uh, people noticed about her ordination, and it was very controversial. She made the personal decision not to exercise her priesthood 
until it was recognized by the wider Anglican communion. Undeterred, she continued to minister with great faithfulness, and in 1947, she was appointed uh, rector of St. Barnabas Church in Hepu, H-E-P-U, and that's where Bishop Hall's instructions were that she would be called a priest. And then when the communists came to power in China in 1949, she then took uh, further theological studies in Beijing to further understand the implications of the three self movement, self rule, self support, and self propagation, which now determined the life of the churches. She moved to Guangzhou, I should know how to pronounce it, but I don't, so I'm, my apologies, to teach and to serve at the Cathedral of Our Savior. And this is where it gets, um, you know, very trying. However, for 16 years during the Cultural Revolution, from 1958 onwards, all churches were closed. Florence was forced to work first on a farm and then a factory. Accused of counter-revolutionary activity, she was required to undergo political re-education. Finally, in 1974, she was allowed to retire from her work in the factory. So she had this whole time in her life where she was subject to the Communist Party. Um, and then in 1979, the churches reopened and Florence resumed her ministry. Two years later, so that would have been in 81, she was allowed to visit family members in Canada. And while there, to her great joy, she was licensed as a priest in the Diocese of Montreal and later in the Diocese of Toronto where she settled until her death, February 26, 1992. I, wow, I had no idea um, about this woman. And I, I really just can't imagine for most of her ordained ministry and her priesthood that she couldn't actually practice and serve the church because of her, it was just the time. It was, she was way ahead of her time. And that bishop, my goodness, we need to call, I mean, he, talk about revolutionary. I'm sure his other priests in the diocese and other bishops around the world did not appreciate that. But she persevered, she persisted. Who, who was that that said? <laughs> and she persisted. So I wanted to share that with you because you know, the psalmist says, um, for you have rescued my life from death, my eyes from tears and my feet from stumbling. I will walk in the presence of the Lord in the land of the living. She never stopped walking. She never stopped living. She never gave up. So I think that's really neat. And I wanted to share that with you today. So there's much there that we can learn from Florence, from Mother Florence. Now, my friends, I'd like to continue with our prayers. When we labor and are laden with worries and care, refresh us, O Christ. When our hands are not ready to accept help, renew our trust, O Christ. When we grow weary of loving others, love us, O Christ. We offer you the cares of our hearts. So what is it, my friends, that you need this morning? what's on your heart, what's weighing heavily on you, or possibly you may have some thanksgivings to offer. As we lift our hopes and joys to you, hear us, O Christ, amen. And now will you say with me the Lord's Prayer? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now our closing prayer. O God of steadfast love, at the wedding in Cana, your son Jesus turned water into wine, delighting all those who were there. Transform our hearts by your spirit that we may use our gifts to show forth the light of your love as one body in Christ. Amen. 
And so, as we say, we long for your glory, Jesus Christ, during this epiphany season, transform us with your glory. And may you be blessed in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.